All right. Um, in the Metuneta hieroglyphics on the walls of ancient Egypt, you'll see a glyph in which that there are hundreds, thousands of them of Tahuti, which actually his name is Jehuti, which that is the origin of the word Judea within your Hebrew text, within your Bible. All right. So when you speak about the word Jew, you actually are saying that you are a follower of Tahuti. That's actually what you're saying. So if you consider yourself a Hebrew or Israelite or Hebrew Israelite um, or practice Judea or Judaism, you're saying you're a follower of Jehudi. And that's actually what is going on. Matter of fact, the word Jehudi, when you see it, it's spelled D J E W J U H U T Y. All right? So you want to make that understandable because. You have a group of people calling themselves the chosen people who are actually are imposters because they're not the oldest people on the planet. You are. And if there's anyone in which that was chosen, then it would have to be you because you was the first put here. All right? So this is part of the whole scenario um, with Tahuti. Now, we go to the next slide. You can see that Tahuti has seven principles, universal principles. Um, of course, the mind or mentalism in which that states the all is mind and everything in the universe is mental, or everything is energy, all right? That's the first principle. That's one that you have to understand. When I continue on with this presentation, it's going to become more relevant of your very existence as far as energy, all right? Correspondence, as it is above, so below. As within, so without, all right? Um, that's reflective <coughs> qualities, vibration, nothing is stationary, everything vibrates, give off light, give off sound, all right? Polarity, everything is dual. Um, everything has its opposite, or actually, we don't even call it opposite, we call it complementary. All right? Polarity, oh, all right, rhythm. Um, excuse the error there, um, typo. All this ebb and flow demonstrated by action and reaction, advance and recording, um, cause and effect. Um, everybody know that one very well. That's the law of karma. What goes around comes around. You read what you sow. All right? Um, generation, which is sex. All right, gender, manifestation of everything is animate, inanimate, or masculine and feminine, yin and yang, which is symbolic to, um, you might have seen um, the yin and yang symbol um, in the Orient. Um, those two forces coming together is actually symbolic of your auric fields, the male and female auric field, and as they come together and intertwine during a sexual union, in other words, to make um, each what appears to be opposites actually complementary in how they connect in union. All right, so that, those are the seven principles. These principles never change throughout the whole universe. They remain the same. However, there are certain things in which that is taking place on the planet Earth in which that is attempting to take you from out of this frame of mind and put you within a Wizard of Oz type of um, re apparent reality. All right, we continue on here. All right. This here is also a hieroglyphic metro in which that, um, which is sacred word of God, in which that shows you something very important. This is the afterlife scene, or what it's called. This is part of, from the Book of Ani, which actually is the open of the mouth ceremony coming forth by day and night, misnomer the Book of the Dead. In the book, or if you get the book by um, E.A. Wallace Budge, which is known as um, the glyph of Egyptian hieroglyphics. Um, you might see this picture in which that shows the scale, the balance of, of course, Anhu, which is Anubis. Here, Tahuti, who's the sacred scribe or writer, writing down or recording the past life and deeds and actions of each, each and every one of us. Tahuti symbolizes thought. His name within Greeks is Thoth. T H O T H. That's where the origin of the word thought, T H O U G T H, come from in which that we use in English. It comes from the Greek term thought, in which that this is Tahuti. So he symbolizes the God of wisdom. Wisdom is talking about your experiences. Your experiences is what brings forth um, um, what we would call your life experiences. What it also is, put it this way. At the back of your head, you have a particular organ there, which is called the medulla oblongata. That area records 
your good and bad deeds, as we would say. In Islam, what they would do, they would turn their head to the right, turn their head to the left. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who the hell are you talking to? <laughs> See, I came through Islam, came through Christianity, so I understand these schools very well. You had me up on some spookism shit. But what happened really is that you're talking to the left and the right hemispheres of the brain in which that records the action, then transfer that information to the medulla on the God. That is the place of where your past lives are located at, your incarnations. All right? You, did, you, you just did not come here. Your soul always have to evolve and um, gain more experience, gain more wisdom. All right? So this is why oftentimes you have had probably a lot of deja vu experiences throughout your life. Now, the Medulla Amnagata also happened to be the place of photographic memory. Now, in Hebrew, there's a word in which that takes place. There's a letter, actually. Out of the 22 letter scripts in Hebrew, it's called Gulp. Q-O-P-H. Now, keep that in mind, because when you go to the Bible, and it speaks about Jesus getting crucified on Mount Calvary, the word in which they, they use is Aramaic, which means Golgotha. The word Golgotha in Aramaic translation means the place of the skull. Now, the word gulf, the letter gulf within Hebrew means back of the head. Now, you put this two together, you find out the correlation is that the back of the head is within geometria or numerology is referred to as the mouth of God. Remember we spoke about earlier that the book of this information is called the Book of the Day, but the actual translation, Metronet, is called the Open of the Mouth Ceremony. So, it's a known fact for those who might have um, seen one of my teachers, C. Freeman L. Um, tapes, Alay Salam upon him. Mm -hmm. You will see that he speaks about the soul incarnating in this physical body by two ways. One by the top of the head, or two by the back of the head at the medulla oblongata. So, if this is the abode of your past lives, your incarnations, then this is the scene that we're seeing right here, actually, is you being judged by your ways, your deeds, and your actions. In other words, you will create your hell or your heaven yourself, based on your experiences that you have gathered here on this earthly plane. And if you take the guilt, the frustration, uh, the disappointments, the lust, the greed, the jealousy, the envy, the hatreds, all of that negative shit, it weighs your heart down. So you can see the heart here being weighed by the feather. Now, most people don't get into the real meaning of this. See, your heart is here. So that means that obviously the feather had to be what? Lighter than the heart. The feather actually symbolic to shoe, shoe, all right? That's the feather of shoe, all right? This is the scale of Mayat, all right? Mayat is the daughter of Ra, the wife of Tahuti, Jahuti. So this is her scales. Now, you see, a form of her right here overseeing this process. You see the form of Tahuti, which is in the symbol of the baboon, overseeing this process. Now, the word gulp not just means the back of the head, it also means monkey. It also means monkey. Now, what the hell will a back of the head and a monkey? <laughs> What is this correlation? The European will want you to say, oh, that's just means that, uh, that is the residual. Uh, well, they don't understand that you came from the monkeys. <laughs> no, they ain't got shit to do, no, no. The monkey is symbolic to, if you ever went to a zoo, if you got to a monkey cage, near the monkey cage, and you did some crazy shit, <laughs> the monkey would imitate you doing it. 
So the term comes to monkey see, monkey do. The word go also means to copy. So the only do it means what? Back of the head, place of the skull. It also means copy. It also means monkey. So who is symbol is a baboon, which is a form of what? A monkey, which symbolizes that this is taking place from the memories which has been sketched upon Yomadulamagawa. So your memories is what is being judged. This is why when a person have a near-death experience or when they actually um, have an out-of-body experience or if it happened in a traumatic um, way, what happens is that as the individual is being judged, because that's actually it's called Judgment Day. Judgment Day is not waiting for the world to be destroyed like y'all niggas been watching Terminator. <laughs> that's what happens. Y'all been thinking, oh, they get ready to drop the nukes and all of this. <laughs> yeah, the European is probably crazy enough to do some shit. He did it in Nagasaki and Hiroshima back in 1945. No doubt about that. But he strategized. That was ethnic cleansing. That was to get rid of the Naga in the Saki. Nagasaki means the city of the serpents. That was to get rid of your ancestors within Japan, the remnants of them That's that right. were still there, who taught the ancient mystery school of Egypt, Kimi, Tamare, Tamari. Mm -hmm. All right? So the word Nagasaki is talking about the serpent or the king's um, city of serpents. All right? You are the serpent race. You are the Anunnaki, those who came from above to come here. All right, the word Anu, the word Anu means on high or up there. The word Nagi, uh, Naga, means serpent. So what, what have you seen a serpent on high at? You've seen it on the crowns of the Egyptians. When you see the serpent comes out right here at the third eye, that is the serpent on high. That symbolizes the resurrection. That is the Christ. That's why Jesus in the Bible tells you be wise as serpents, but yet gentle as doves. What the hell did Jesus got to do with talking about some serpents? I thought, I thought that was the symbol of Lucifer, the devil. This nigga come out, but he, told, he just told you to be wise as the serpent. Who's the God of wisdom? He was telling you, okay, we're going to continue on here. Because all of this correlates into universal law. Because I'm trying to teach you where the action takes place of law. It happens in your medulla Magala. That's the law. That's the place of law. In you, in your physical body, right now, right here. Okay? So, what happens is that the heart must be um, lighter than a feather, and what that means is that the kundalini, as it comes up, it must pass the heart chakra into the throat, the third eye, the crown, in order to get and gain access to the kingdom of God, which basically is referred to, well, Luke 17, 21. Y'all, who, who, who been to church? Come on, hold on, hold on. There's more hands than damn four. <laughs> Born and raised in the church. Hallelujah. Uh, anyway, I'm putting, it, I'm, putting it, I'm putting it in this way so everybody can comprehend it from every area. All right, I'm, go, I'm going from every area. So everybody get all of this from, because I do comparative religious study. That's what my degree is in, all right? So that's what we're doing, all right? My doctorate in metaphysics, doctorate of, of um, divinity, is in comparative religious study. So I can take you from every religion and show you the correlation between all of them and how it correlates to your physical body. And that's the thing in which that no other speaker is doing. I was instructed to do that, all right? By elders who taught me. Ramani Amanu L, this book right here, The Negro, The Black, The More. He told me specifically, he's been in Rome Crucial for 25 years, actually 30 years now. And he told me that that's what I need to teach the people. Mm -hmm. So the Kundalini must be above the heart, which symbolizes being lighter than the feather. The heart being lighter than the feather. The feather symbolizes, like we said, with shoe, which symbolizes the breath. The breath is what resurrects the energy within you, that internal power, that force. The mother goddess principle, which is the kundalini, the serpentine fire, the serpentine fire. That's the kundalini. It must come up 
pass the heart into the immortal bodies. Otherwise, if the Kundalini is trapped below the heart, into the heart, the solar plexus, the navel, or the genitals, that is referred to as the four devils. That means that you pass form, all right, in one of these four areas, you have not reached the heart beyond. Yes? Can y'all put your phones on silent, please? It's like the fourth time that's going to happen. They also say the same thing. Okay, so what happens is that if the Kundalini is trapped in one of these four areas, then that means that you are trapped. You have to incarnate again. That's what that means. All right? So when your physical body decomposes, it returns back to the elements. All right? The consciousness in which that you have returns back to what is called the realm of form, which is the ethereal state. All right? And what happens is that when the time is right, these electrons in which that generated your existence this time will be used in the next body in which that will produce your next incarnation because you were not able to raise yourself above the four devils. Now how do you know about the four devils? Well, if you go to the nation of Islam, if you go to the nation of gods and earth, uh, matter of fact, we have the supreme wisdom lessons over here somewhere. I'll read it for you. We go to the justice lesson 10. This is what it says. Let's Get up in here right quick. And so, this is um, 1 through 14, this is 10. It says, What does Muhammad and any Muslim murder the devil? What is the duty of each Muslim in regard to four devils? Four devils. What reward does a Muslim receive by presenting the four devils at one time? Answer. Because he is 100% weak and wicked, will not keep and obey the laws of Islam. His ways and actions are like a snake, a snake of the drafted type. See, remember, the Kukulini is a snake. It's an electrical magnetic current. And when it get trapped below the heart, you are now a snake of the drafted type. Because you are trapped in your mortal body, which dies. That means the four bodies in which that, that consciousness might have resonated in dies along with your physical body. That's the reason for incarnation, so that you can get this shit right and make sure that next time you raise yourself above into the higher chakras so that you will not have to incarnate again. Here, you will not have to incarnate again. Here, here, you might, you might have a decision, you might have a, a, a possibility of where you want to do with the next incarnation. Whether it's going to be a third dimensional state, it might be a fourth, it might be a fifth, whatever the case is, all right? In hyperdimension um, physics, they found 27, all right, dimensions, okay? But what it says here, it says, so Muhammad learned that he could not reform the devils, so they had to be murdered, and Muslims, so all Muslims will murder the devil because they know he is a snake. And also, if he be allowed to live, he will sting someone else. This is the same. Same story in the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? In Genesis, when Eve <laughs> got tempted by the devil or the serpent, the snake, right? And made her eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil instead of eating forth from the tree of what? Life same thing. This is right here. And it says, so every or each Muslim is required to bring four devils. Is, you're required to bring four devils. These are the four lower chakras. Heart chakra, solar plexus, navel, genitals. The energy resides right here at the base of the spine and it must be risen up above the heart chakra. Otherwise, incarnation happens. So, and by bringing and presenting four at one time, his reward is a button to wear upon the lapel of his coat. The coat is the physical body, the lapel is his. Have you ever seen um, the monks or um, the yogis? You would see them with the dot where? Over their third eye. Right, over their third eye, which is the button. This is what they're talking about. Symbolic to the activation of the pineal gland. If you see Muslims as they pray, they place their heads 
on the ground. So after a while, when they get up, you'll see a mark right here on the forehead, symbolic to the activation of the third eye. Because the seven um, positions in Salat, and the word Salat in Arabic means to raise up, it means fire. They don't even understand their own belief system. <laughs> you just get me doing rock hots. <laughs> banging my head on the ground and not explaining to me what the process is. There's seven positions, all right? And those seven positions activate each of the seven chakras. That's why you start out with al-fatiha, the opening. Because the words in which that you're stating have seven stanzas. The seven stanzas end with the ayn sound. Right? That Udu Bilahi in the Shaitan Elevar Jin. Zin. Mm. The Ain sound. If you look on Hebrew, if you look on the Arabic, you can see it's the 16th and the 18th letter. And the Ain symbol is one eye. That's the symbol, is an eye. Now, Matthew 6, chapter 22nd verse speaks specifically about the fact that if your eye be single, mm -hmm. your whole body will be filled with a light. I ain't write that shit. That's in your Bible. <laughs> Alright? I didn't write that. So, what is this one eye which they're talking about? What is this one eye they're talking about? This one eye is your pineal gland. Referred to in the occult as your third eye. Really, it's your first eye. All right, and we'll get more into that information. And it says, also, a free transportation in the holy city Mecca to see Brother Muhammad. Now, regardless of which Muhammad that you might want to say that that is referring to, let's say he's referring to the Muhammad of 1400 years ago. All right? And which the word Muhammad is something to type. It's not a man from 1400 years ago. Right? That's the problem now. All right? um, that's why this debate going on, whether if this man was white or black. Just like his same story about Jesus. It don't matter. All that is made up. It's allegorical. It's talking about what's in you. And the states that you can achieve. All right? Muhammad is here. It's the crown shock. That's Muhammad. Jesus is the third eye. All right? The throat is Moses. Right? That's why it was like, oh, let my people go. <laughs> oh, God, I can't speak as well as my brother, Aaron. Put him in front of the Pharaoh. I don't speak eloquent enough. All of that is talking about the expression of the throat chop. David is the heart. The word David, Dawi, Dawu, Arabic, Hebrew, you know what it means? Beloved. Heart. Abraham is the solar plexus. Okay? Nabal is Noah. Adam is the genitals. These are the seven major prophets. It's talking about your body. You got caught up in the goddamn storm. <laughs> oh, Moses split the Red Sea. <laughs> what did they do for you? That was 4,000 years ago. Allegedly, based on scholarship. The niggas played the Red Sea 4,000 4, years ago ain't doing nothing for you now. But it does if you put it into its metaphysical content. Once you understand that these seven states of consciousness, these seven prophets are symbolic to seven states of mind. So Moses symbolizes an aspect of the mind. Your throat chakra is an aspect of the mind. All right? Because your mind doesn't just exist here. Your mind is throughout your whole anatomy. If I took a cell from you, a strand of hair, a spittle of blood, a speck of blood, a spittle of spit, I could form a whole nother you in existence called cloning. Right? Isn't that what science is doing today? So the whole science of that is that 
Your thoughts resonate throughout your whole existence, your whole being. You are a walking thought form. <laughs> That's what you are. You are a concentration of seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. Fourteen generations in human form right here, right now. A concentration of every thought, deeds, and actions and experiences that they went through, you experience it at now. And if you ever want to tap into your ancestral data bank, you simply go to a state of meditation. And they'll open themselves up and reveal to you the secrets in which that they learned on planet Earth. That is also referred to as the Akashic Records or the Universal Library, which is the medulla oblongata. See, I told everybody who came to the lecture last night that if they came to this one, I got new shit. I, I don't never go back. <laughs> I got to drop it on you a new way each time in order to make it resonate. So I know there was a brother who was at the lecture um, last night. He getting a whole different thing today. <laughs> brother Imhotep was there last night. Yeah, Brother Imhotep, exactly. All right, so um, this is what this scene is, all right? This is what this scene is telling you. Nobody broke that down to y'all before. We just see the scene, and then tell you, well, that's the skills of my yacht. And then they tell you the characters, and that's it. All right? This is Ani. All right? Ani is symbolized as you coming before the judgment day, which is the skills of my yacht. And that's symbolic to his heart or desires being weighed upon that scale. Now, you see this creature here? This is called animus. <laughs> what animus does, that if that damn little heart is alive in that feather, he eats that heart. He tear it up. That is the destruction of your desires, of your attachments. That's what it's supposed to represent. So that your incarnation will be veiled. What I mean by that is that when you incarnate again, what happens is that you have no memories of the last incarnation. That's what they thought. <laughs> but since I told you the Medulla Omnigata is the abode of your past incarnations, in Qigong what we do is tap like this at the back of the head in order to scar that area so that your memories come back. So now, you have glimpses of your last incarnations, even though animus ate them. <laughs> they still exist. Because the destruction, understand this, the flesh itself is the veil. See, when you came back into that little baby body, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all do that. You know, we, got back, yeah, we came back into that little baby body. What happened is that, um, that was the veil, all right? You know, most of the time, you can't remember no further back than the age two, the average person. But yet, you was on the planet for two years before that, and you don't remember basically nothing, all right? Because the soul has to develop. That's what that's symbolic to. And the soul has to reconnect, all right? So at that time, we're looking at this scene being told to us. We can continue on. All right, so this is the eight rules of reincarnation. Humans are almost always reborn in humans. A birthmark can signify injury or a means of death from a prior life. When people who are strong will die suddenly, they may become ghosts, in other words, earthbound. Um, all our good and bad deeds enters into the new body of our soul. During karma, good karma, the, during good karma does not eradicate bad karma. However, the Jews believe that they can. So-called. Right, the so-called Jews believe that they can. This is one of the things that would actually F them up in the head. After death, we are not, um, not reborn immediately, all right? Um, matter of fact, um, it would take as far as on that plane, um, it would be as a thousand years, all right, on the astral plane. 
but it could be only two years on earth. All right? Souls become more spiritual and wise through progressive lives. Very few people are able to recall their past life memories. All right? And this is all part of universal law. All right? It's part of natural law. Law which that necessarily agrees, um, which so necessarily agrees with nature and state of man that without observing its maxims, the peace and happiness of a society can never be preserved. Can never be preserved. Knowledge of natural laws may be obtained merely by the light of reason from the facts of these essential agreeableness with the constitution of human nature. Natural law exists regardless of whether it is enacted as positive law, although there may be instances where natural law cannot be judicially enforced. That is based on those laws in which we talked about. The European, I'll be honest, as much as he wants to control nature and everyone on this planet through mind control and manipulation, he can't control none of that shit that I just told you about, <laughs> which is universal law. He can't control none of that. <coughs> Right? So that's why it's, it, it, it speaks about the fact that we cannot be victims. All right? Because we always have the connections to the universe. All right? Matter of fact, you are the universe in miniature form. Right? All right? Your mind spans the whole gambit of the universe, all 76 quintillion miles in diameter. That is your mind. That means everything that's in the universe is already in you. You're a replica of the universe. Okay, you're the microcosm of the macrocosm. All right, so you are a natural person, a human being as opposed to an artificial or fictitious person, such as corporations. Corporations are what? Artificial entities, artificial persons. That's why it's called a corpse. Corporation for the word corpse. A corpse is what? A body. But this body is not living. It's not breathing. It's not the uh, 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 um, uh, emotional entity. Okay? But this now is what they have transferred you into. Well, you have a corpse. Yeah, but I'm breathing. <laughs> you know? There's a difference. So it says here. The phrase, natural person, does not include corporate entities. Does not include corporate entities. But the phrase person without qualification may or may not include artificial persons, depending on the context. Thus, the phrase, no person of the 14th Amendment of Equal Protection Clause has been held to include natural and artificial, uh, artificial persons. And that's the reason why the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Because they knew that would be the loophole for us to get ourselves from out of this problem that we've got ourselves into. All right? Because the 14th Amendment supposedly did what to made you a citizen of the United States. But you're not a citizen of the United States. Dress Scott Case came a hundred years later and still told you you're not a citizen of the United States, nor will you ever be. And that's cool. <laughs> I don't want to be federalized. You are indigenous, which means you are a natural person. Indigenous is a natural person. You gotta keep that in mind, because the oldest people on the planet are indigenous. They are natural, all right? They're not caught up to the artificial uh, matrix in which that they have produced. So here, we go down further. It says artificial person, an entity such as a corporation created by law it's actually legalities, it's not law, it's, it's colorable law. And given certain legal rights and duties of a human being. So artificial person, which is a corporation, can do basically the same thing you can. A being, real or imaginary, you see that? Who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being. Also termed fictitious person, juristic person, legal person. Black's Law, Edition 7. Come on. Okay. Now, according to Black Soul, something edition again. This is what I 
what I'm talking about. Natural person is indigenous. This is in the Black Soul Dictionary. A native, the original or natural inhabitants of a country. See, we are the Americans. All right? Now, how we know this? Because the oldest people and the oldest civilization in the Western Hemisphere is the Omex, who was West Africans. They came from the Mandingo, the Mandinka family. They were part of the Dogon. The Dogon was the astrological priests of the high priesthood in ancient Egypt. They left from out of there 8,000 years ago. Okay? This is what happened. They left out of there 8,000 years ago. So we actually are the descendants of the Dogons, the ancient Egyptians. All right? This is your heritage. Now, what happens is that we know that the Omex, with their civilization and the last Western Empire that stood here prior to the Europeans, was out of the Yucatan Peninsula area of Mexico, Leventa, Tabasco. You have the Omex that ran from out of the interior of what we call Mexico now on up into the southern area of what we call Texas, New Mexico, and on across into the southern region, all right? On up on the eastern seaboard, all the way on the other side of California and across the mid-eastern portion, all the way over to um, Chicago, Detroit, all of this area, all right? So this is where you still find our people at today. Nothing has changed. You can still see the largest populations of our people from the south up along the eastern seaboard, across and along um, California. So we got them actually surrounded. <laughs> All right? So right here it says, also according to the Blackstone Dictionary Bridge, artificial person, it goes even further. Person created and devised by human law, not by God's law, for the purposes of society and government as distinguished from natural persons. So corporations are examples of natural persons or artificial persons, corporations. A artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the law of a state, right? An association of person created by statutes as a legal entity, right? Let's continue on. Because you're gonna see the statue in a second. All right. So this is Stromius Homo. In the Wizard of Oz, they had the character, the first one that Dorothy met on the Golden Road, the Yellow Brick Road, was who? Yeah. Was the Straw Man. Yeah. So here, the Scarecrow. A man of straw, one of no substance. Now, if you look up in the Blackstone Dictionary, you look up the word um, colored, Negro, and black person, you can see that it says specifically that black person is a generic term. Negro has no, no um, significance whatsoever, no substance in which that the courts, all right, or, or by to judicate. Also, the word colored means a disguise or pretext. Now, this is all in the Black Soul Dictionary, fourth edition, specifically deluxe. But here it says, a straw man, a man of straw, one of no substance, put forth as bell or shuri. Note, there's no coincidence that the warden is also called the straw horse, and the inmates are wards of the state. Black Law Dictionary, sixth edition, straw man, a fright. A fright is a fright. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I'm from New York, so you know, you heard a nigga line, we'd be like, that son's not front. <laughs> it's a front. A third party who is put up in name only to take place in the transaction. Nominal parties to a transaction. One who acts as an agent for another for the purpose of taking title to real property. This is why you was enslaved, for they can take your property. <laughs> That's what the whole slavery thing was about. All right, was to take your property which is your land. Now you don't believe me, look up the word American in Webster Dictionary from 1936 and 1937. It says the word American, by definition, is a copper tone colored native. 
got that. I'll show it to you. I got it on here somewhere. Don't get me started. <laughs> Teach. All right? But that's the, and then it says, and then, and then what gets me is that this, it, it goes on further. It says, uh, and it puts in quotation before the European settlers. <laughs> so that means that they are not American. Just like I don't want to be a goddamn U.S. citizen. <laughs> and I'm American. They are not American, but they're U.S. citizens. Because, see, it's the United States of America. Somebody got the superior position here. And see, when you put the word of, what that means? Part. Huh? Part from. All right, so from. Yeah. Part. So the United States is of America. America ain't up to goddamn United States. Mm. Uh oh. Alright, let's continue on. <laughs> Alright, so your name in all caps is part of this straw man fraud that they perpetrated against us, which is not universal law. I just told you and showed you the laws that we have to abide by is based on our own experience in which as you call that out with Dulama God. That means just like within Buddhism, the whole thing about Buddhism is to learn how to become what? Detached from your emotions. Don't get caught up into it. Yes, shit happens, but don't get caught up into it. This, you know, this, in other words, start looking at it like a movie. Because that's all you actually are in this, in this play of life is an actor. <laughs> You're actress. And we're all here to play our part. You have your own purpose, your own mission. And we said you came back here with fulfill it. Fulfill it. All right? So, the name on these particular instruments, your birth certificate, your social security card, in all caps, show forth this fraud of this straw man in which they, they created. Continue on. I ain't even gonna read the whole thing. I got a lot of slides to get through. So, they put you in a state to call civilis mortuus which means typically dead, dead in the view of the law. This is why they called you Negro. The word Negro is taken from the Latin word necro, in which that means what? Dead. Now, who here on the birth certificate is, is, is said to be black? Have y'all looked at your birth certificates lately? Huh? Nah, I said it's black. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, if you go back to the 60s, um, mm -hmm. those who was born in the 60s or before the 60s, they'll say Negro. Mm -hmm. You go back before the 1930s, they'll say color. <laughs> mm -hmm. I say Negro. I got three generations in my family, my great-grandma to my grandma to my mom and me. Everybody got different joints. <laughs> It's black, <laughs> Negro, colored. I'm like, God damn, what, uh, huh? In four generations, huh? Four generations. Yeah, but when they gonna stop putting that on the birth certificate? <laughs> Jesse, Jesse been saying that since 1990. Well, 1980s, you know, 84, 85, when he, you know, ran for president. You know what I'm saying? So when, so when that supposed to happen? Every 30 years, right? Right, every 30 years. 1900, you was what? Negro. Negro. Right. 1930, you became okay. colored. 1960, you became African black. Americans. Oh. You became black, right? Afro right. 1990, you became oh. what? African American. American. You're the only people on the face of the planet that change your name every day in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with that? Huh? <laughs> we are. We're the only people that do that. A hundred years ago, Chinese was still what? Chinese. Japanese was still what? Japanese. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Mexican. Right, Mexican was still what? From Mexico, right? <laughs> we the only people that, that do that. All right? So that means that they left us in civilist more tools. And it's no coincidence that the word more two start with the word more. All right? So here it says, the condition of one who has lost his civil rights. 
That's the reason why the civil rights movement came in 1950s with Martin Luther the King in order to give you civil rights back, right? But see, like Malcolm said, you can't have civil rights unless you first recognize as a human being. Right. <laughs> and I don't know if you want to be recognized as that either. Because <laughs> actually, we're the gods and goddesses or the natural rules or natural rules of this planet. We were the guardians. See, Earth is a prison. This is prison planet. Alex Jones got that part right. This is prison planet. And we were the custodians of this prison. And the bad souls that came in from the other galaxy, we were supposed to be in here in order to make sure uh, shit was going well. In other words, we the damn, you know, we, you know, we the parolees. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to get parole? I'm going to teach your ass how to damn get up out of here. I just showed you. Make sure your heart is lighter than what? Lighter than the fire. So I'm a, I'm a parolee. That's what a prophet or a messenger, all that shit in the Bible, nigga, you a parole. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> and that's why they killing our kids and not getting in trouble. All right. So you don't want to be civil as much you want to be in full life. What's the um, last little dictionary say continue in both physical and civil existence. See? See, the physical means that you had to be recognized as a human being in order to be physical. See, they don't see you as a physical being in the sense of a human being. They see you as cattle, or the French word is chattel. All right, we'll get to that in a second. But it says that is neither actually dead nor civil mortals. That's what it says. That's what it dictates for tradition. Give you the page number. So, this is United States Supreme Court case law, Cruden versus Neal, 2, um, North Carolina, 338-1796. And based on this, or what's called stardiasis, which means if you have cases in which they're very similar, then the decision will have to be made the exact same way in the court of law. So here this decision was made, and it says there, Every man is independent of all laws, except the universal laws that we just showed. So that means that if you deny to be an artificial person, you have the right to do so. Because that's what they have categorized you as, is an artificial person. You have the right to deny that. Because it says there, every man is independent of all laws, except those prescribed by nature. I just showed you the natural laws, the universal laws. You can't exempt yourself from that. But you can't exempt yourself from this white man's bullshit. <laughs> his Albion uh, um, legalities. His colorable law. That's why he also called you colored people, because his colorable law is based on the entrapment of you. This is why they have racial profiling. <laughs> this is why 65% of the prisons is filled with us. Yes, yeah, 65%. And we only make up 13% of the population, allegedly. The CIA reports that we make up over 27 to almost 30% of the population. But that's their reports. The United States census say something else. I know, I know when I was little, um, the census people would come around, my grandma would hide everybody in the house in the closet. It's only me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but that's what my grandma did. She ain't trust them. My great grandma told me the only thing the white man want to do is steal your land. Now I know exactly what she meant. I ain't know what she meant then. After, you know, she 85, okay. She lived to be 101. All right, so he is not bound by any institution formed by his fellow men without his consent. You're not bound to anything in which that they do. The reason why there was no slavery is because we did so many uprisings until they just had to say, okay, you had to let them go. Yeah, this is their land, but you know, if you want to be able to survive on their land, you better let them go. There's too many Nat Turners, too many Denmark Vesey's, too many Gabriel Prosses, too many John Horses. There's too many of them in which that was doing this thing. Many of them is not even mentioned in history because they don't even want you to know about the ones who did succeed. They just tell you about the ones who didn't succeed. 
right? So they always bring up those same names during this time of the year. The shortest and the coldest month. You don't never hear about that time. Barely. I got taught about that term in, in the high school, in um, junior high, you know, got spoken about it. But as far as the actual things in which they did, you know, they ain't never want to talk about you know, the white folks that they killed. You know. But they do talk about the fact that he was betrayed by his own. They love that part. <laughs> they love that part. Because that oftentimes what happens. Continue on, please. Okay, Supreme Court of Colorado ruled this. Natural rights, inherent rights, and liberties are not the creatures of constitutional provision, either at the national or state level. <laughs> Good gosh. So that means the Constitution guarantees your natural rights, which is called unalienable rights or unalienable rights. Your liberties, your inherent rights, your natural rights. That's what the Constitution did, was guaranteed. In order for you to continue having um, um, equality. Remember, the Declaration of Independence, which is one of the four Constitution states, that all men are created equal. Allegedly, Thomas Jefferson wrote that, but yet at the same time, had slaves. And was hitting the main one, Sally Hemings. And got, right, and got a whole generation of Jeffersons now. So-called black Jeffersons. George Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> the inherent human freedoms which in which mankind is endowed, right, on to, uh, to send it to all earthly governments, rights that cannot be repealed or restrained or restrained restrained by human law. So these are things in which they, they can't do nothing about. Rights derived from the great legislator of the universe. Thus, the only way the government will con contract with you is if you waive your inalienable rights and agree to be under their jurisdiction. Hence, wow. once again, by wow. consent. Do you so we got brothers standing in front of the judge, and they, and as soon as the judge say, do, do you, you understand? understand? The charges being brought up against you, and no, you Honor, stand well, there, respect, and I you don't. stand there, and you say, "Yes, Your Honor, I do." Well, now you got to suffer the consequences of the statutes in which they, they claim that you broke or violated. Really, if you study law, which is called Sherrod versus Collins, United States Supreme Case Law, another one, it states specifically in there that for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Once again, for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. If there's no injured party, then guess what? There's no crime. Out of the 65% of the brothers and sisters that's in prison right now, guess what? If you had the other people of color, it goes up to 88%. 88% of people of color is in prison. They who are in prison, do you know that majority of their so-called crimes actually were victimless. So hence, there was no injured party. When the last time you seen a crackhead come up and um, say, yeah, I'm gonna file charges against my, um, my dealer for giving me some bad crack? <laughs> when the last time y'all seen that? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, here come Pookie. <laughs> I don't wanna file a complaint. <laughs> Yeah, he gave me some bad crack, yo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, where, where I got to go at? What, what's, the, what's the division? I need to find out what's the hell going on. You don't say that. <laughs> that don't happen. So guess what? Those are victimless crimes. Drug dealing, drug usage, that's victimless. A drug user is the one who's doing damage to themselves. What the hell they doing up in there? But it's supposed to be rehabilitation. It's not taking place. So, Sherrod versus Cullens specifically states that for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. It must be a corporate delecti. Meaning, it must be a physical being who actually writes up a sworn affidavit against you 
stating that you have done something to injure them or that you have damaged their property. Then you go to court. They got the thing twisted. This is what means innocent before being proven, you know what I'm saying, um, before being proven guilty. They got it twisted. Now you're guilty before being proven innocent. They flipped it on you because they wanted to make that child. They wanted to make that money. So where do we go from here, chaos or community? Martin Luther King, who actually was Michael King, right. changed his name by his grandfather to Martin Luther after Martin Luther of um, the 1500s who nailed the 98 Theses on the Wittenberg Church. But he says, we're approaching areas where the voice of the Constitution is not clear. We have left the realm of constitutional rights and we are now entering the area of human rights. See, they don't want you to know this Martin Luther King. Right. The last three years of, years of his life, he was talking about black power. Right. Okay. The last three years of his life, he, that's where he went. Kwame Ture, who was known as Stokely Carmichael, was one of his um, um, one of his good friends. Now, y'all don't know who Stokely Carmichael is. Kwame Ture, he, yeah. he was one of the founders, in the sense of the Black Panther Party. All right. Of the ANC. All right. Also, of, um, he was part of SNCC, All right, which was affiliated with SCLC, which is Martin Luther King's group. All right, y'all know the little history, right? Right. Yeah. Let's give you. Let's give you. In the ANC, I'm talking about his connections. You know, with those from out of South Africa with the apartheid movement, they they were still having correlations. All right. Stokely was still dealing. Kwame Ture was still dealing um, with all of that. All right, during that time period. Um, continue on. We're going to Malcolm um, remarks now. You'll see exactly what Malcolm said about it. It's all. Awesome. Okay, so Malcolm speaks on civil rights versus human rights, and he makes it plain. Human rights come before civil rights. You cannot get civil rights until you have human rights. Human rights represents the right to be a human being, to be human beings. Whenever you are respected and recognized as a human being, your civil rights are automatic. No. You have to get recognition of human rights first. The Constitution classifies our people as three-fifths of a man, which meant subhuman, not a complete human being. And once our human characteristics were completely destroyed, this gave them um, justification for treating us like we were animals. Then it also justified them selling us. If the black man's human rights been respected, he never could have been a slave here in America. And if his human rights had been restored by the Emancipation Proclamation, automatically we would have been citizens after the Civil War. So we must be regarded as human beings, or humans. Our human rights must be respected before we can ever be regarded as citizens and our civil rights be respected. This is why you know you're not a citizen because every 25 years, a president has to sign the voting right bill just to give you the legislation to what? Vote. Oh, vote. oh sorry, God. That came by way of Lyndon B. Johnson in 19, what, 65? 1985. Now, 1982, 25 years later, Reagan had to sign it. Bush, in 2007, 25 years later, had to sign it. This is, this is um, 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 baby Bush. Right. Right. The one who voted for Obama. Right, the one who voted for Obama. <laughs> His cousin. And got on the national news talking about he didn't know what he was doing. And, you know, and yeah, well, I know what you was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, three-fifth human being, that is in Article I, Section 2 of the Constitution, that they refer to us as Indians, and this is what it says, Indians and those others do not pay taxes, but yet are classified as three-fifth person. This is what it says right in Article I, Section 2 of the Constitution. So, what does this mean? Malcolm told you, it means that they um, relegated us to a what? a subhuman status, all right? This is why you are second class citizens and not first class citizens, 
because that's a lower class system. Here, chattel, which is from the word cattle. An article of personal property, any species of property not amounted to freehold or fee in land. It says the term chattels is a more comprehensive, comprehensive one than goods, but it also includes what? Animals. Anime, Animates, as well as, well as, as inanimated property. Wow. Mm, animated property, what would that be? Living, breathing, moving. A person who is wholly subjected to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, but whose persons and services are wholly under the control of another, one who is under the power of a master or who belongs to him, so the master may sell and dispose of his person, of his industry, and of his labor. What happened? Black Wall Street. They sure did. Well, Every the inch Gap of band, it. The Gap That's Band, who was from Greenwood, mm -hmm. um, uh, um, Oklahoma, from that area, wrote the song called You Dropped a Bomb on Me, as the sister said. And that song was based on what took place there within what? Black Wall Street. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. The Greenwood Dictionary. Right. So, what happened with MOVE in 1985 in Philadelphia? What'd they do? They dropped the bomb on them. So, as you see, the shit didn't change. And if you don't, how many of y'all was born um, before 1985? Yeah. Okay. So, so that means that it was all within your lifetime, right? Yeah. So this is all within your lifetime. So we might say, well, it was with, you know, that was my great grandmother, you know, um, time period there, 1921, and you know when that took place. Yeah, but it happened in 1985 too. So nothing has changed. 60 years later, they were still doing the same damn thing. 64 years later, they did the same damn thing. Right? Right? So we're still dealing with these psychopaths. They're sociopathic. Seriously. Yeah. If you don't understand that, then you don't understand racism. You don't understand sexism. You don't understand mind control. You don't understand anything which is taking place on this planet. You're dealing with a psychopath. Meaning that he has no emotions, no remorse. Because there's no way that I could go and bomb hundreds of people, thousands of people. But they do it with no remorse. Talking about um, um, it's for their benefit, for their safety. Well, when did your safety become my safety? <laughs> I'm trying to do me. You do you. You must have forgot who got the superior contract here. Because the United States of America, the Constitution is a contract. That's a grant, a trust. Mm -hmm. And they broke that trust. So I ain't got to buy, buy none of that shit. Because <laughs> they broke the trust. Just like they broke every single treaty that they ever made, which was 371 treaties. They broke every last 371 treaties. Now you're talking. All right? So here, an article of personal property, and it says inanimated as well as inanimated property. All right, so it's talking about specifically those who was relegated down to three-fifths who they re still refer to as their property or their slaves. That's what that breaks down to. So for you having chattel papers of being an animate object or animate property, they got chattel papers for you. What's these chattel papers that they're still producing today? Because you're still having an auction in which that is taking place. You don't believe me, it's called the stock market. Right. Remember they used to get you up on a market? Who ever seen the slave movies? All right. Go back and watch Uncle Tom. Farewell to Uncle Tom. Go back and watch Sankofa. Go back and watch all of these. You can see them putting up on the auction block, which is what? The stock market. They had to look and check the stock out. They had to look at the teeth. Look at the genitals. Look at the buttocks. They had to look and make sure 
There was no damage done to their property. Right? This same thing takes place now. What do you think your little feet went on onto that damn contract when you was born? That long form. It's called a birth certificate. And your footprints is on there because they still marketing you off today. See, this is part of their colorful law system. I'm trying to explain to universal law and their colorful law system so you can get out of theirs and get back to yours. Let's go. Continue on, please. All right? But you've seen the chattel papers, all right? They also said that if you go back, go back one, one moment, right quick. I get it. Let me see. Go back right quick. And let me read something right quick. Right here. It says, chattel papers means a record or records that evidence both a monetary obligation and a security interest in Pacific goods. Now, remember, goods can be white. Animate or inanimate property. Okay? Now, let's continue on. That's all we got to read. Huh? Oh, no. Go on back. Go back. All right. Now, this goes back to what Malcolm said, too. Malcolm said three fifth person. What was he talking about? Not only is it in the Constitution, Article 1, Section um, Article 1, Section 2, but the Jews refer to you as such. They have the, the Yiddish word called Goet or Gohim. And it means a non-Jewish person, Gentiles, all right? Gentiles. Now, Gohim, a foreign nation, hence a Gentile, also a troop of what? Animals. For a flight of locusts, mm. Gentiles, heathens, nation, nation people. people, the strong concordance, exhaustive concordance mm -hmm. of the Bible, 1995. Gohim. Look what it says. Literally, Gohim means nation. It also, Jewish slang for what? Cattle. Cattle. And what? Animals. Per Jewish thinking, because remember, who runs the banking system? Jews. Who runs Hollywood? The so-called Jews. Who runs the world? Who is the Rockefellers? Who is the Rothschilds? Thank you. Right, these so-called Jews. These imposter Jews. Right, these copycat Jews. Right? Now, the Jewish nation and the Gentiles, non-Jewish nation, go ahead, what it says. Gentiles and goods. Goods. So, they see us as animals, Good, as money. goods, and Gentiles, which means the genitals. The word Gentile is derived from the word genitals. So it's saying, oh, they are people who dwell in their lower nature, mm -hmm. in their lower self, in their lower minds. And therefore, we'll take and suppress them, because they're only three-fifth person. There's two senses that they lack in. They lack in their seeing and their hearing. This is Masonic talk now. Three-fifth person is Masonic code in the Constitution. It means that you were stripped of two senses. Remember, you got five senses. Seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing. Two were stripped from you. Seeing and hearing. That means if I showed it to you, you wouldn't believe it. If you heard me say it, you don't want to believe it. Because he taught us as children. Right. Also, you got to be led around by them because we can't see and hear. Exactly. So you, that's the reason why in the 5% lessons it tells you that you were deaf, dumb, and what? Blind. Thank you. Deaf and dumb is the same. That's mute. Which means what? You can't hear. Exactly. You can't, you can't hear. You can't speak. And then blind means you can't see. So it tells you right there is that you were stripped of your senses. So you are the deaf, dumb, and blind, which would be referred to as the 85ers. All right? But then they refer to as the 10%. Remember the blood suckers of the poor. Then you have the 5%, who's the poor righteous teachers, who's trying to resurrect and trying to uplift fallen humanity. Yes. This is what we're trying to do. We so, huh? We here. We here. <laughs> so here. Now check this out. This is the reason why I said I don't know if you want to be human beings. Because look at the definition. Monster. What did it say? A human being by birth. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> I'm a god or a netter, all right? Mm -hmm. That's what you are. You are a force of nature. You are a netter or us together, we're netter rules. That's what we are. So we're not even in a human category. I just bumped you up from three fifths of a person <laughs> being scammed and frauded on to, to a whole person. To being, to being beyond even a human being now by their own laws. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is in their books that they say a monster is a human being by birth, but in some parts resembling a lower animal. A lower animal. This is why on the Sphinx of the Giza Plateau, the head of the Sphinx symbolizes one who is above the horizontal. But the body, I mean, excuse me, which is above the horizontal, which is the vertical. But the body of the animal is what? Horizontal. It's, hor it's um, horizontal, which means that it walked on what? All fours. This is why within Masonic teachings, it speaks about Hiram Abiff. And it says the Hiram Abiff must be what? Resurrected at a 90 degree perpendicular level, which is what? From horizontal to what? Vertical. Bingo. Upright. This is 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Upright. This is 90 degrees. Uh oh. What happens when you do this? Y'all seen this before? Yeah. Where you seen this at? Trample down yeah. negative evil. That's right. In ancient Kimmy, this symbolizes the car, which is the trampling down of one's lowest self, which is your animal self. So they want you to identify with the animal part of yourself, lust, greed, jealousy, envy, and hatred, so they can continue dominating you. That's good. That's the goods. All right? That's, that's goods to them. That's the goods. Sound economics. Sound economics. Willie Lynch. Might not be um, 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 written. Story. It might not be authentic, but it, got, it makes the principle clear in it. Yeah. So it says a monster have no inheritable blood and cannot be heirs to any way. Land. Uh oh. So that Ooh. means that's how they stole your stole land. land. Bingo. Yeah. And put you in slavery. That's what I'm just telling you, right? Mm -hmm. And this is how they was able to do it by saying that you're a monster. You're a three-fifth person. You're a subhuman. You're a human being. Right. You're a human being. You're something yes, to which that right. That but we're God's chosen people. So therefore I can certain I can segregate you. I can make you submit to me. We're the Jews. And they're using your shit. They're using the laws of Tahuti, which I showed you earlier. <laughs> Thinking and believing that they can go beyond cause and effect. Believing that they can conquer their bad deeds by doing good deeds. Mm -hmm. This is what they believe. And then taking a scapegoat, which is a sacrifice, and channeling the negativity off and then casting it out into the wilderness. This is in the Old Testament. These are the rituals that they really do. Tell them. All right. All right, y'all. Um, who heard of Finkelstein? Finkelstein. Right by Finkelstein. Mm -hmm. Right, or Frankenstein. More like Frankenstein. Because this dude came out and told people specifically what the Jews do. The 300,000 children missing, or people missing. Every year? Every year, they grind them up. And they serve great. They have grinders. And they serve up their the blood meat. as pudding. Right. The and blood. blood pudding. Y'all heard right. of that blood pudding? Blood pudding? They're using our children. They right. grind they them use, up. They use the blood in leaven bread mm -hmm. during their rituals of Passover. Mm -hmm. But the rest, the rest of the body parts goes to McDonald's and Burger King. That's right. Or right. to the black market for organs. And he says right? it on the video. And he says it. And the man is like, you show up being truthful. He's like, it don't matter. Y'all not going to do anything. Y'all are go heen. Y'all go heen. You eat your own. Y'all are children. animals. Y'all are animals. And we've been doing it for thousands of years. If y'all so trust us. Do nothing about right, it. If y'all trust us to feed you, then we give you something to eat. We'll give you something to eat. We'll give you your own born, your own you, your own children to eat. But of course, they take the organs out and sell them. Right, they the sell heart, the organs. The livers, the lungs. Right, right, they sell the organs on the black market. All right, this is how they see you. And this is what happened to that baby in Florida when they found him in the school, rolled that's up, right. talking about they didn't know he was how he died, but he was rolled up in the rug. You know, that's murder. 
Right. Came and got him, took his organs, filled him with newspapers, and dropped him back in the gym. Now, if you don't know, um, Dick Gregory said the same thing. That's what happened to um, Trayvon. Trayvon Martin. They took his organs. That's why his family didn't know he was dead after 30 days later. He died seven, 70 feet from the house. 75 feet from the house. So, y'all have to understand what is going on. I'm trying to show y'all um, the so-called Illuminati and what they're actually doing. All right, and how they use these laws throughout their, their tentacles stretch throughout every facet of society, religion, sex, law, labor, economics, politics, education, health. Okay, their, their tentacles stretch throughout each and every one of these areas. And our job is to show you the counteraction or the counterpart within each of these facets to save yourselves. All right? To save yourselves. I just showed you the law. I'm going to get to the health. I'm going to get to um, um, the religion. I'm going to get to the education. All of this will be breaking tonight. All right? As much as we can. So here, it says, no, human being, Valentine says, only see monster. Neither of the Above major law dictionaries define human beings. Only monster. monster. And that's the way in which they want you. Now, continue on, please. So, what do monsters need? <laughs> oh, obviously monsters need birth certificates. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, because this shows forth their cattle. Remember? The word goheen means cattle, all right? Animals, three foot person, subhuman. So when you were born, your parents register you with the government as a corporation. That's what they're registering you as, remember, a corpse. Someone in which that is not leaving, um, live, um, living, is not breathing, is not eating, yeah. is not defecating, mm -hmm. right? It's inanimate. So this is what they made you, an artificial person. By receiving and signing the birth certificate, in a few years, your corporation will receive a tax ID called the Social Security number. What was the next person that Dorothy met on the yellow brick road? The Tin Man. Uh-oh, the tax identification number. T-I-N. <laughs> tax identification number. T-I-N. T-I-N. Uh-oh. So the next one was the Tin Man. So the straw man, now the Tin Man. And you see how both of these instruments was used to bring Dorothy into the artificial mm -hmm. world. The world of Color. glitter and gold. Yeah. But Grandma told me everything that glitters ain't gold, oh, no, baby. Right. Uh-oh. Put me back in black and white. That way I know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I'm on the black side, you white, and we got, and we, <laughs> we got some problems. <laughs> but in the damn glitter world, we all the same. We, we bleed the same blood. <laughs> well, some of them help us too. <laughs> this is so you can be used as collateral for the government to acquire debt. That's right. You and your labor, your time, and your energy is what backs up the national debt. You are stock. Mm -hmm. Once again, your birth certificate with your name and all caps goes on the stock market, on the foreign stock exchange, known as the 4X. And you are exchanged throughout the world as a commodity, as security, as a debt. Who owns the major debt of the United States now? Orientals. The Chinese. Mm -hmm. That means what if they come over here and want to collect? Who are they going to collect that shit from? They own my birth certificate. Thank you. <laughs> so that means if you ain't put nothing in order to deny this fraud, that means you consent it and you agree with it. This is why when I have I see malls who talking about, oh, you don't need no paperwork. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you didn't see what just happened here? This is paperwork <laughs> <laughs> that they did on you at birth without you being conscious of it. 
with your four little, with your, um, with your um, two footprints on them. Telling you that, showing forth that you are a chattel property to them. On the long form. And the corporation right now have your bond, which is your birth certificate, as a security instrument, a negotiable instrument that has now at worth, after the age of 18, hundreds of millions of dollars worth just that birth certificate. And you have no investment in it because you're not conscious of it because you don't want to do paperwork. <laughs> I'm like, this is the dumbest stuff I ever heard. But there's more out here who's telling you that. I won't say no names. But I wouldn't keep listening if I was y'all. <laughs> Damn Chinese, I heard it's posted up in Mexico. Right here. The value of the birth certificate is unlimited. How big it is good to put a value on it, such as $100 billion in what? Silver dollars. You may make it more if you want. How much you are worth, that's you. But if you write up a contract, which is an affidavit, I recommend that you insert this information. How much are you worth? Well, when the mother, which is the informant, on the birth certificate, and you can see the word informant, give the title birth certificate to the state, the baby then becomes property and the slave of the state. A ward to the, the state. state. So you wonder how you become a ward to the prison system? Because you was already a ward to the state to begin with. Mm. When you go to court at the district level, who you battle against? Who's the damn prosecutor? The state. The state. Oh, shoot. But they act like they all different. <laughs> Uh-oh. I got a problem, state. You're an artificial person. You're not breathing. You're not living. You're not an entity. Matter of fact, won't you stay, get your behind up on that, on that um, podium there? Let me see what's going on. Let me question you about some things. Okay. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, because what? It's not living? Oh, but you can put me up there? For real? Hearsay. <laughs> Hearsay. Prosecutor, you won't even there. Hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife used that in court, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the DA got up, the state got up and said, damn, that was good. That was good. She sat down she said, the judge, she's like, you get back in there. She, she, she said, damn, that was good. But, and she, but, but the judge said. You got to get a police officer to say it. Right. Who was right. there? Right. Who, who? You was there. Anybody else in the courtroom was there? No, just you. Okay. So when the prosecutor said something else, I was like, hearsay, according to the rules of evidence, as hearsay, the prosecutor wasn't even there. Exactly. She had to sit down. Exactly. Why are you talking? You won't in there. Right, you right. How can you the state can't speak on behalf <laughs> the police, of some the of the police of the witness? <laughs> the state isn't even living in a prison entity. Grounds of dismissal. Right. So I just my wife just dismissed that case right there. Your Honor, with all due respect, grounds of dismissal. Right. <laughs> and guess what? Case was dismissed. <laughs> Why? Because the DA said that she did not want to violate the rights of Miss Kadera to Pac L. Bay. Now she said the whole thing. She showed it like she had been practicing. She's been practicing. <laughs> she been practicing. She said, she said, I do, um, Your Honor, I would not stand here and violate any longer the rights of Miss Kadera to Pac L. Bay's right, and I want to be exempt from such. And she sat down. And the judge looked at the way. The judge said duly noted, and which judge, we learned that that wasn't in the record. It was duly noted. Right. It was only oral. So right. you live and you learn. Right. But, I so, still but the judge said duly noted, but then he said, get you, get back up in here. Get back. <laughs> you, you don't sit down. You get back up in here. You fight. You fight. I'm like, you the coach. And, and I was like, and I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, he's the coach now. <laughs> he's the coach. He's trying to coach her back into, into the game. Now that's like, now either you're going to play coach or you're going to play the damn referee. Right. Which one is it? That's two different positions. Right. Judge, you're the referee. You ain't supposed to be the coach. Okay? Now, but this is what they're doing. So, the property and access of every living United States citizen, remember, you're not a United States citizen. If you learn how to use the Dress Scott case decision of 1856, 1857, then guess what? Mm -hmm. My wife and I used it. Two prosecutors. They were trying to dag on get us. They was like, "We are going to give you a psychic evaluation." And me and my and wife. And I said, "Well, please do because the state has continued this case over 13 times. This is a different case." 
And I was like, and also, yeah, she, said, she said, well, do you want a bench or do you want a jury trial? I said, neither. I'm not a U.S. citizen, what you used to. According to Dress Guy versus Sanford, I'm not a U.S. citizen. And guess, what, like, and guess what they did? Jump back. They jumped back like Mike Tyson hit him. Had no idea. So you don't have a jurisdiction if I'm not a U.S. citizen. Both of them jumped back. Boom! And guess what? When they got when we got back in court, yeah, they've been hit so many times. We don't go to this distance. And I'm like, come on, baby, there we go. Let's go. We gonna be another one. <laughs> so we paving the way with this. Right. So so I mean, no, that's we, why we educate. We not talking. We live this. We guinea pigs. We put ourselves in these positions. All right, that's, that's the thing about me and different other lecturers and talkers. I live this shit. They read this shit from a book. <laughs> There's a difference, all right? And I've done read hundreds and thousands of books already. All right, I ain't just get one book. <laughs> I know niggas who think they're the expert after reading one. I say. But for, <laughs> but for two weeks and three days, each certificate of live birth is to be filed at Washington, D.C. And then it's transferred to the DTC, Depository Trust Company, 55 Water Street, New York City, New York, 10041. That is where they house the warehouse receipts. The warehouse receipts. At least keep records of it. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on the stock market to be exchanged for goods, for monies, resources, which you have no what? Well, you got the right, but you don't have anything access to verify, to no access to it. So, evidence revealed that there is even a federal children department established by the Shepherd Townsend Act of 1922. Under the Department of Commerce, every citizen is given a number. The num red number on the, now look, this is 1922. What did I say earlier about what happened in 1921? We spoke about Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was rivaling the European Wall Street. Okay? And we was beginning to do import and export without the authorization of the European. Our money was bouncing in our community over 16 to 19 times. Exactly. And this was the melanated people, us, and the Native Americans. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so -called. less than a year later, during the same year as the Rosewood incident in which that took place in Florida, with them once again, the Klan destroying, <laughs> maiming, killing, castrating, lynching, mm -hmm. <clears throat> under the Department of Commerce, every citizen is now given the number, the red number on the birth certificate, which is... Here, the state file number is here, but this is the bond number. Now, if you don't believe it, we go on, and it says, in every birth, its value at $650,000 based on the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code, the IRS Code. Federal Reserve dollars in collateral for the feds. That's what that translates into. This becomes for the feds. No, let's continue on. Well, notice that it says bank note company. You see that? On the bottom of your birth certificate. You see that? Bank note company. This is a bond. That's a bond. Now, if I'm mistaken, you add the word age onto it, what it becomes? Bondage. Hold up, say it again. Bondage. One more time. Bondage. Uh, that's what they just did to you. So once again, chattel property. You see that? So you don't have nothing on record to counteract the bond ditch that they place you in, then you are, as they said, you have consented. They have jurisdiction. Because you have not questioned jurisdiction. You have not questioned. And remember, I showed you the law where it says it's only by your consent. You do not have to agree with the damn construct with this goddamn matrix that they got going on here. Do you understand? <laughs> no. <laughs> Your Honor, with all due respect, no. Your Honor, in all due respect, emphatically, no. All right, so here, on your dollar bill, you got the Federal Reserve Banks. E is Richmond, Virginia. All right, Richmond, Virginia. No coincidence, cause the same banks in which that runs this 
runs this, Social Security Administration, which is all part of the Federal Reserve Bank. Remember, showing you this collateral. On the back of your Social Security card, you have what? A letter and eight numbers, okay? This right here, once again, in Richmond, Virginia. Let's continue on. What is the dollar bill? It's a promissory note, a debt note, all right? It's a promise to pay at some point in the future, all right? This is why China is no longer utilizing what? FRN. American dollars. Now they're using Bitcoin. Exactly. FRNs. They're no longer receiving them. Why? Because America can't possibly pay back on the promissory note. They can't pay back on that. See, the Federal Reserve is just printing up money as they go along. Oh, oh, you need that for the debt ceiling here? Oh, you need that for the stimulus program? Oh, here. Look more. <laughs> You're just making it as it go along. All right, whether it's a $1 bill, $5 bill, um, $10 bill, $20 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill, it doesn't matter. It still costs the same to make. Three cents? Right, three to four cents. Now, that means that it's not even worth the money that's being printed. If I got a $100 bill, but it only costs three or four cents for me to make this $100 bill. What the hell is that? That's some serious way. Deflation. And on the other end, inflation. For you. <laughs> Because now, you, being that they've used you as the collateral, you have to pay back the debt. So when the Chinese come a-looking, <laughs> oh, I got to tell you, better have your stuff in order. <laughs> All right? Because the Chinese, they eat dogs. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> Rats. Cats. Uh, and babies. Oh, my God, yeah. Okay. Puppy. And, and the Japanese are now making... Meat out of your shit. Oh, yes. Doo doo burgers. It's called poop burgers. They're getting them out the sewer. Poop burgers. What? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is all real, y'all. Look at that thing. All I'm telling you, have your stuff in order, yo. <laughs> have your stuff in order. Yeah. All right? Continue and they're converting us into cannibals. They are taking the rest. That's the, that's the whole point. The pills and stuff that's are made out of point. skin. The capsules on the vitamins is made out of skin. Right. Melatonin was actually coming from human beings, and they actually used to say that on the back of the bottle. And they but now they claim that it comes from cattle. This is money, the top one. You see it in gold coins, all right? Or a silver bond or a silver certificate note. That's what it used to say on the money before 1972, all right? Before 1933. Right. You had the House Joint Resolution of 1933, June 5th, in which that Franklin Delano Roosevelt, president at the time, uh, put forth the New Deal, in which that he stated that gold would no longer be backed, would no longer back the fiat note or the money. So now you have the fiat notes now because it's no longer have any backing or FRNs as it's referred to as. So now this is the debt. And actually at the top, um, you know what it says. It says this is a debt note. It says exactly what it is right on the top of the money, right? Yeah. Continue on. All right. So, you see the Social Security number here? That's called your IMF, International Monetary Fund number. That is also referred to as the prepaid levy bond number. Prepaid levy bond number. Okay? Keep that in mind, because the key word is what? Prepaid. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to show you how to tap into this. It's prepaid. Because at birth, they made the contract, but it didn't tell you that you, had, that you actually could have access to the account. All right. So the origin of the Social Security card was designed by Frank Campbell of Albany, New York, in 1936, um, three years after the New Deal. The creation of the Social Security account is known as the SETI Q Trust, which refers to a beneficiary having an equitable interest in a trust. That's you. With the legal right being invested to the trustee. They claiming that's them. So what you got to do is fire them and take over the account. 
Green versus Underhill. The IRS is the accounting and collection division of the International Monetary Fund, the bankers, the Jews, who the company owns money to. They are the ones who enforce and oversees the bankruptcy of the company, the United States. Do you know that the United States originated from a company called the Virginia Company? It's a company. Right? President Obama is the head, is the CEO, or the president of the comp of the corporation, of the company. The United States. So right here, they are really not your enemy in this sense. They are only doing what they are hired to do, and that is to keep track of the bankruptcy of the company. It is imperative we learn how to use them to our advantage as they can be a tremendous resource for us because the IRS has the ability in order to audit the courts. Mm -hmm. You go in there with a W-9 form and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, Your Honor, um, 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 here you- I You want to do business with me? Right, you want to do business? I'm gonna need you to fill this out, Your Honor. Right, you, um, you want some, you, you, you-, you Sheriff, you, could you hand this to her? <laughs> right, you attempting to extort money from me? For a crime that doesn't exist? What the fuck is a seatbelt violation? A speeding ticket. What is that? Did somebody get killed? Did somebody get harmed harm in the process? Right. Then there's no then there's no what? Crime. That was committed. Right. And then that's why I, that's why they tricked you and they called it infraction. They was, ma'am, this is only an infraction. Well that means that is not a crime. <laughs> so I'm not, not paying shit. <laughs> <laughs> educate, educate. Right. So it goes on and it says, Your yeah. exemption is a bridge between the private side and the public side. Mm -hmm. What's the exemption? This is called your exemption number. Without the dashes, that's your exemption number. That's your exemption number. The state file number is the number which you would utilize on your documents also, which is on the birth certificate. Continue on, please. All right, so you want to know, look on the back of your social security cards, y'all. Remember, we showed you E, which was Richmond, Virginia. But this, there's 12 Federal Reserve banks in which that each one of the letters that is in front of your social, that is in front of your um, number on the back of your social security card. A is Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. B, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. C, Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. D, Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. E. <coughs> Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, F, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, G, Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, H, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, I, Federal Reserve Bank of uh, Minneapolis, J, Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, K, Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, L, Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. All 12 of them banks is what makes up your Federal Reserve Banking system today. This is on the back of your Social Security card. Just look at the letter in front. It tells you who's housing your warehouse receipt. Which bank? So guess what? You go and get the routing number of each one of these banks. Now you can write your own money orders and tell them to take it out of the exemption account that they've been defrauding you from the whole time. If you want me to pay anything, it's called accepted for value. I'll accept that you claim that I did a crime. However, I have to have the ability to know to discharge it. Because hey, see. In court, you claim that there was charges being brought up against me. Well, I got a papers here in which that I can discharge those charges. Is the court willing to do contracting in that manner? This is an admiralty court, isn't it? Then you should be able to do maritime proceedings. Meaning, let's get it on. Set up for value. Right. Herman Cain, you heard that? All right, so this is how you do it. Accepted for value. Approved for payment. Non-negotiable or conditional. This is what you will use. Exemption from levy. Deposit to the United States Treasury and charge to the same, which is what? Your name, your full. So as you see here, and charge. We charging what they claim that you charge. So hence, one charge, and one charge does what? Cancel oh, oh, one more time. One charge, and one charge does what? Cancel. You 
set off. You neutralize it, right? So, being that this is now since 1933, paper for paper, but well, I got my papers, you got yours. <laughs> my papers say I can discharge this debt or set off this debt by charging, actually, that's what we mean by discharge, actually by us charging. But it says, there is no money to pay anything. The contracts are already in place. We simply accepting the credits that have been established and authorized to set off the debt um, with the same credits. Written in proper banking um, speak, it is possible to set off unsecured debt items to the IRS and authorize the Secretary of Treasury to issue money orders to pay off those debts using the public side straw man, which is the Social Security number. All right, reverse certificate and Social Security card. On the back side of the um, um, Social Security number, there is a um, alphanumeric um, um, account number in, the, in your straw man name that is your private account that can be drawn from. By doing so, you help reduce the national debt. So by you learning this, guess what? If you got your papers in, um, um, in proper aspect, if the Chinese do come, you can, mm -mm. Go, on, go on to the next thing. <laughs> I, I got mine. You got yours. <laughs> Keep it moving. I don't know how you say that in the Chinese, but uh, you know. Hold on, let me go get the Ros um, Rosetta Stone. Uh, learn some Mandarin right quick. Spanish, underlay, <laughs> underlay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shishi. She. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you. <laughs> Keep it moving. Book it, you're welcome. You're welcome. Keep it moving. I, I got two of them for you right now. Keep it moving. <laughs> Straight good. That's you. All right? <laughs> Continue on, please. This is just a little bit. I ain't going to keep going until we begin right getting to the more deeper information in a minute. But the birth certificate is a negotiable instrument. That's what the birth certificate is. Being a bond is a negotiable instrument. A registered number or set on security, a stock certificate evident and representing the preferred stock of the corporation. You are the preferred stock. And against what you, on uh, which you are the surety. It is a pedigree chattel document established the existence of our straw man, a distinct artificial person with a fictitious name. Your name in all caps, Edom um, Sanan, which is the word of Latin meaning it looks or sounds the same, but it's not. Black's Law Dictionary. It is a document of title to a straw man. It is a warehouse receipt for your body. Delivery receipt. Industrial bond between the flesh and blood, man and woman, and the industrial society and corporate United States government artificial person. Okay? That is what is going on. Birth certificates are form of securities called warehouse receipts. The items included on a warehouse receipt are described as um, 7 202 of the Uniform Commercial Code, the law which governs commercial properties or papers and transactions which parallel a birth certificate or birth certificates now appearing to a least qualified as a warehouse receipt under the Uniform Commercial Code. It says, Black's Law Dictionary, 7 edition, defines warehouse receipts as which is considered a document of title, may be a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with invest, um, inventory as security. Ten minutes. Uh, inventory as security. Now, huh? Ten minutes. For what? To conclude. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I thought we were going to take a break. Okay. Oh. We're going to do question and answer. Oh, oh, that's what's going to happen? After ten minutes. Minutes. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so as you see here, being that the birth certificate is a warehouse receipt, is a negotiable instrument as a bond. That means you can actually get copies of the birth certificate from the register of deeds and send them to a corporation and tell them to use this. <laughs> because this is, the, this is what they predicate the whole system on is for that birth certificate being a bond. And if a bond is a negotiable instrument, then I'm negotiating, here go the bond. A copy of one is on bond paper. Go to the um, go to the register of these office and watch them print off a bond paper. What warehouse receipt called your birth certificate? And then seal it. And seal it. So that now becomes a negotiable what? Instrument. Instrument. Because guess what? 
the clerks are actually deputies of the Secretary of State and also the Secretary of Treasury. So you just made yourself lit? Bingo. You just liquidated. That's why the Wicked Witch in the West died when she got one. Did what? Oh, I'm waiting! Oh. She mouthed it. Right. She Wicked Witch of the Queen. East. Excuse me. Right? <laughs> right, right. That's why she got water ties. Assets was liquid. Liquid ties. All right, let's continue on. All right, so we finished that part, so now let's get back to universal laws. Yeah. Because this is the real part right here. 90% of your body mass is in fact stardust. Because all elements except for hydrogen and helium are created in stars. Continue on. Thank those dead stars, without them, you wouldn't be here. A supernova explodes, that stardust material is what actually formed your physical body into existence. The calcium in your bones, the oxygen you breathe, the iron in your blood were all cooked up in the star that died billions of years ago, in stars that died billions of years ago. Okay? So you are oldest stars. Before stars, you existed. Right? The stars are just your physical body. This is why oftentimes, if you watch the whole scene, the um, uh, movie Lion King. Mm -hmm. What happened to Simba's father, Mufasa? What happened to him? He became a star. He became a star up in the sky. Indigenous people all over the world, Native Americans and Africans, Aborigines, they all say that when you die, you become a star up in the sky. So a dead star is what formed your physical body. But when your physical body decomposes and the spirit raised from out of the, the soul raised from out of the physical body, what does that soul become? A star. So it's a rebirth of a star. So now you resurrect or reincarnate for a time period as a star. <laughs> okay? This is what the ancient indigenous people spoke of. So here, oh, go back. There are approximately, let me see. Well, that's enough for that anyway, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They all need to put group meditation. <laughs> all right. The generator out, man. Yeah, I, 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 I see. I see. All right, question so. Question and answering. All right, we're going to go to question and answering. <laughs> Obviously. All right? <laughs> yes. Uh, as an astrologer, I do charts for a lot of people, and like I have to get their birth certificate. Right. Birth certificate information. Right, because you need the time. And I noticed that in Cincinnati, I don't know how it is other places. When somebody gets a copy, like if they lost a person, they got mm -hmm. to get a copy. They don't put the exact time that a person's brought. No, not on the Why short form. Why do they leave that off the birth certificate? Because that's on the long form. Because the entities in which that is purchasing your birth certificates now can do astrology charts on you. And see how valuable you are because of the skills in which that is told to them in the astrology chart. As you know, if I want to know um, your career moves and what the potentiality you possess, the potential that you possess, I can find that in the astrological chart. I can do that through numerology by putting together the birth date, the birth time, as well as also um, all. I can do all of that and f find out who you actually are on this planet. Mm -hmm. well, I know. And remember uh, the whole thing about J. Edgar Hoover, who was a high degree mason, 33 degrees, also um, a shriner. He specifically stated that um, he wanted to what stop the rise of a messiah, of a black messiah. So they don't they, they love doing astrology charts, so they keep the long forms. The short forms don't have the time on it. No, they don't want that. But the long forms do. When we say they have on the start form. Alright. So if your mom normally if your mom don't um, remember what time that she had you, more than likely you won't know. Oh, you can't find out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. I have to find out through thousand. Yeah, I have gone with people to get the birth certificate right. and when I when I saw I wasn't on there, I, mm -hmm. I told them to make them people go back. And look at the thing and bring it back. They want to charge money for it. Right. But I just tell them, so, well, don't buy it. Just get the time and have them tell you what the time is. And then you write it down. So they'll right. bring it out and show you. Right. And they'll borrow the paper off right. the way. Right. Mm. right. And we see, and Thank you, only, Elder. And see, that's only a copy. Mm -hmm. That's only a copy of the long form. They don't have the originals. Okay. Right. The originals is securities on the stock market. So everything that they're doing is fraudulent. All right? Uh, yeah, we're gonna unplug it. It's back on. Oh, you oh. back on? Yeah, yeah, it's back on. Oh, okay. It's back on. You go a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. I got you. I know it's cool up in here, y'all. The next lecture is going to be a half price for everybody that came, so we're going to ask everybody to write their names down. On this tablet here, please. Yes. We apologize. Yeah, we got to get into that spiritual part. That was the next part. We got to do that. It's on back. Okay. Yeah, this is the solution. Okay. We can't just leave you hanging now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope we don't got nothing to do with that. You know, when the drone comes, I got to show you my paper. Oh. Yeah. 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 No, we don't want it to get to that. Because, see, we have what we need inside of us with our thoughts. We are the heart machine. Yeah, we can control that, no problem. Especially when we come together like this. Well, well the, the solution is, number one, um, learning the science of law. That's one, all right? It's learning the law so that you can protect yourself. Oh, thank you, Papa. Some things you can actually just speak into existence if you have a strong enough will, all right? So these are just some of the things that you have to master. We spoke about earlier that there's nine um, areas in which that the so-called Illuminati have their tentacles stretched through, all right? <laughs> law is just one aspect of it. But you have to learn the law so that you can sh you know, show yourself a proof and do like what I just showed you, how to get from out of their jurisdiction and out of their fraudulent contracts. And establish what you need for yourself if you go on a contract with them, at least you have the upper hand. Remember, you are the American. You are the United States of America. They are of you. You're not of them. There's a difference. So you have the superiority, um, or superi um, superiority, yeah, superiority in this particular matter. So um, here we have um, 7E27, atoms is in the body. Right, 7E27. That's how many atoms is in the human body. Mm -hmm. The atoms of which that is in your body is carbon atoms, which is the sixth element on the periodical chart. So six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which equals 666, which is mentioned in the um, book of Revelation, which talks about the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is talking about the physical body. Right? That's the reason how they were able to make you a monster. Because what is the beast? A human being. And remember, a human being. Right? Good. And it says resembling what? A lower animal. Mm -hmm. So they just showed you. All right, remember. All right? So they just showed you that all of that is predicated on the physical body. So carbon is the atom, sixth element on the parental chart, which symbolizes um, the human body, human existence. Continue on. Right? Um, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to, vib to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a consciousness and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Right? This is um, Max Planck, um, who actually um, is a um, quantum physicist. Or physicist. All right, who was? Um, this is very important because the force in which they're referring to is called centrifugal and sympathetic force, push and pull. That is the same force in which that holds your physical body together. All right? It manifests through the breath apparatus, which is the insulation and the exhalation. If you stop breathing, what happens? You die. You decompose. So the breath is what composes and holds your physical composition together. When you leave your body. All right? Mm -hmm. All right? So the breath activates melanin. That's the force that they also is talking about, is melanin, which is dark matter, black energy. 
Melanin is the fundamental unit of the universe and exists in four forms. Cosmic, planetary, plant, which is chlorophyll and animal kingdom. You see that? How melanin is in the animal kingdom? So that means that they relegated us down to the animal kingdom, but yet we're cosmic beings. Mm. You see that? Yeah, that's Because wild. it says part in whole. You resemble a lower animal. That's the monster. That's the beast. That's the cattle, the chattel. But you are a cosmic being. So once you start taking yourself back to that category, then everybody else on the planet would respect you. How I know that is because at the United That's Nations true. five years ago, we had a lady who was the president of um, the Aborigines um, Indigenous Society from out of Australia. And she told us, she stood behind the podium at the United Nations, a room full of about 400 of us, and she said, do y'all know that y'all worship around the world? Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, huh? What the hell you huh? Wait, shit, don't feel like it. Okay, <laughs> like, I'm sure. Like right, and so we, and because of everybody facing the audience, she was like, well, maybe, maybe that was a little bit too, too much for some of you. But any and everything that you do, she said, becomes the fad and becomes the next idea and the next money making schemes on the planet. Mm. And she said that, Jeez. and she said, and we learned from looking at y'all, from y'all. How to keep our land. Yep. Now, now hold up now. This is now everybody know that this land is ours except for us. Mm. And she said, we looked at y'all. Y'all um struggle in order to keep your land here. And we looked and we knew that when the European came to us, they wanted to sign a lease for 99 years. And because of that, we would be cheating our descendants, mm -hmm. our generations, next generations from out of usage of the land. And so we denied them, and they tried to come giving us billions, two billion dollars, so and we told them, no, we don't need it. And so we kept that land because we saw what happened to y'all. Right? So they saw that it would be a debt that their children would have to pay. Exactly. What country? Exactly. What country? Australia. Australia, the Aborigine. Mm -hmm. Right. The Aborigine. And you know basically what happened to them. It, what happened to us is what happened to them. They weren't being attacked. They were propositioned for their land. Right. And their kids were stripped from them too, put into their institutions, and that's how they right. came in to push exactly. people. Yeah. Exactly. Their kids. Yeah, the white rabbit. Right. White rabbit. Right. For the exactly. political defense. Exactly. For the defense. Right. White rabbit. Exactly. 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 So God created man on the sixth day, which is actually symbolic to the sixth element, carbon. Or rather, this right here, which in the Quran is called black mud. That's carbon, it's black mud. All right, so, which is what makes up melanin. Carbon makes up melanin. That's what melanin is, it's carbon. So, melanin can rearrange its chemical structure to absorb all the energy across the radiant Energy, energy spectrum, sunlight, x-rays, music, sound, radar, radio waves, etc. Black humans can can charge. Uh-oh. 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 Remember, we just spoke about the artificial charges mm -hmm. being brought up against you that with your consent, they can allege that you did what they claim you did, even though there's no injured party, no damaged property. But with melanin, you too can charge. Oh yes, you too can charge with melanin. Oh yes. So, right here, charge melanin. Black human beings can charge up his, her melanin just by using what? Just the by sun. being white. Uh oh. Or being around what? Right? The right, right type, type of, of sounds. Musical sounds or another energy, energy sources. sources. Melanin itself on the philosophical plane is black chemical biological doorway through which the life force of African spirituality passes in, moving from the spirit to the material realm. Showing you how to move from cosmic to the animal kingdom. They just relegate you to the animal kingdom. Because they weren't going to teach you this. Because they weren't going to teach you the cosmic essential process of melanin. Mm -hmm. What is essential? You get in sunlight. 
right? You are a tropical being. We ain't actually supposed to be up in this cold ass environment. <laughs> we don't need cold we, that word. You know what I'm saying? We don't <laughs> even, even coming up here, we were talking about how um if you notice, no matter what city you go to, black folks is always on the south side. Cause, cause somewhere in our DNA, we always remember that we was in the South. <laughs> we ain't, <laughs> we put up with we put up with the cold, but goddamn, we want the sun. <laughs> well, we need it. Give me springtime any damn time, and it's right around the corner. Damn it! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We okay. just left North Carolina. It was 75 damn degrees. We were like, oh. We finna go to the cold. <laughs> With the turtlenecks. <laughs> With the damn coats. <laughs> we don't need that right now. But we need it up there. All right? Sylvia told us that there was snow still on the ground. We like, oh, shit. <laughs> and if you're not getting enough sun, then you will be depressed. And, you know. Right. Well, that's what you have, what is called seasonal afflicted disorder. It's called SAD, and which means that we become depressed, right. we become suicidal in our thoughts <clears throat> um, because we don't get enough sun. Matter of fact, based on your chakra system, you have seven major chakras in your body. Um, you have what's called um, your blood supply, in which that travels through your whole body, eight minutes and 20 seconds. Well, the sun happens to be 93 million miles away from the planet Earth, and it takes the rays of the sun to touch down to the earth eight minutes and 20 seconds. That's no, cool. that's, that's no, um, that's, that's not just a, um, 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 right, right, that, that is. That's a deep science in that. Right, that's a, that's a science. So when the blood goes through the whole body, it bathes the brain in nutrients. Baptism. So the baptism, so it symbolizes the charge. So if you learn how to charge up from the cosmos, your melanin, because being that you're a cosmic being, that means it's cosmic energy is coming in. 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. 300,000 tons. Mm. What it does, we'll show you. Let's continue. We're going to hurry up and get past all of this. That's a male and a female. That's nine male weeks. female showing you nine weeks within the womb how they have the same structure and can't even tell the difference because we we're asexual beings at a particular time point. Actually, essentially fit on females um, um, at, that, um, at that particular point. All right, this is forbidden archaeology. And I, and I showed that picture because um, women was here first, brothers, all right? No disrespect to the brothers, you know what I'm saying? Y'all still the gods of the planet Earth. But the woman structure, her body in physical form was here, manifested on this planet existing before us. Scientists have found out that women was here 150,000 years before the male species. The only way that males came here was because the rays of the sun was in opposite of our chromosome pattern now. Right now we have, males have XY chromosome. This 2-8% of genetic material is missing from off of that particular Y, which actually was an X, in which that was once female. This is why underneath the Schrodem sack, brothers, you notice you got a line there right. in which that showed that your ass been sewn up. Right. You were sewn up. Women are still open. They don't have that line. You do. <laughs> now, if something, <laughs> I'm sorry. That that means that means that you had to come after. All right, all right. That's what that means, brothers. That you had to came after, cause you don't that sewn up. They're not. <laughs> okay. You don't believe me? Look under your shoulder sack all the way to the end, and you'll see the line. <laughs> you don't believe me? Let your wife or woman find a little stitch. Is that that stitch is there naturally? <laughs> okay, nature did that, so you can't get at me. <laughs> I'm just a messenger. <laughs> All right, continue on. No, no, go back, go back. All right, no, next one, right here. All right, so forbidden, forbidden archaeology. Just a book you need to get: Hidden History of the Human Race. Michael Cremore, Richard L. Thompson. They state that right here, they found objects of a metallic spirit dating back 2.8 billion years old in South Africa. So not only is Africa the hub of life, in South Africa alone, we have structures in which that goes back 2.8 billion years, not million. So people want to get caught up into Lucy or Deganesh and talk about, well, Deganesh is 2 million years old. 2 million, huh? Man, 2 billion, 2.8 billion is what I'm talking about. 
All right, so continue on. The Smithsonian attempted to deny that, and as you've seen, it says these structures had to be created by intelligent beings. Because, if I'm not mistaken, what you need in order to, um, to, um, to melt iron? You need fire, right? Now, I ain't seen no ape working with fire. Right, I ain't seen no apes working with no fire. <laughs> I ain't seen no apes um, 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 doing no metal working, no metal urgy. And if we came from them, why they still here? Exactly. So, so I'm sorry. All right. Exactly. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so um, you know, this right here, what I just showed you, busts a hole in that Charles Durman nonsense. Debunks that because 2.8 billion years ago. We was designing and making structures, mm -hmm. metal working, okay? Metal working, not just clay pottery. <laughs> we were doing metal. All right, so here, Albert Church for a symbols of primordial man states that the Twa, which is the pygmies, are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. That means they was there 2.8 billion years ago, which you are a descendant from. Continue. These are the pygmies. In the book, Gods and Spacemen in the what, Ancient West. Hold up. Where they at? Ancient, ancient West. West. Hold up. Where's the East? Supposedly in Africa is East, right? From yeah. here. Yeah. All right, so who the hell are these little black men in, in the West? Oh, that's <laughs> us. Ancient. It says in the Ancient West. Yeah. Gods. Hold up. They were the gods and spacemen mm. in the Ancient West. Right here. The pygmies inhabited Earth for 30 million years. That's in that book. Older, older than once again than Dagnesh or Lucy. We know who the original people were on the planet. The pygmies, right here. They was the one who's doing the metal work 2.8 billion years ago. The intelligent life on this planet. So, right here, in the pygmy, which is the Congo, on Katabu, um, written by um, um, Katabu Jane Pierre, um, Halle, he states, the Twa, or the pygmies of Zaire, are the world's most genetically pure ethnic group and it's surviving since the dawn of humanity in real harmony with God, nature, and each other. Huh. So you want to get back to nature, you better look at the oldest people on the planet. All right, we continue on past here, continue on. All right, right here, no, go back, you got to hit this. All right, I showed this last night, but I got to get you all up on this. This is in your Bible. I know I got some- Number one people. sold book in the state. In the world. <laughs> I, 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 I know, I know I got some good Bible thumpers up in here. Like number one right? seller. So, so, right, it's the number one seller, exactly. <laughs> so, right here, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Let me show you some verses that's in your Bible that you ain't know was there. Okay. Do you not know that you're, what, that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells with? In you. Okay, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Your physical body is holy. So even though they say that you was relegated down to an animal, you have to realize the substance of yourself in this physical world. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. temple you are. First Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is with? In you. Whom you what have of God, and you are not your own. For you was bought at a price. The price was what? That star. I showed you the star. The star exploded, died, and formed your physical body. So that was the price. The price was the exchange of what? Energy. Energy. Oh, shoot. Because guess what they call money? It's called what? Currency. Uh-oh. What is a current? Energy. Stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas be thinking, look, nah, nah. Therefore, glorify God where? In your body. body. Not in the church. Not in the mosque. Not in the... Not in the Jews. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is your mind, with your breath. Your breath is spirit, which are God's. Uh oh, let's go to second let's go to second Corinthians 6, 6, 16, 18. For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I would dwell where? In them. Oh, and walk where? Among oh, them. Oh, now, see, that's why when you get, you know, <laughs> y'all be calling me these stories. But I will be their God, and they shall be my people. See, you are the chosen people. 
I will be the father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. So Jesus wasn't the only son. You are God's sons and daughters. You are the chosen ones. I just showed you the first people on the planet, who they look like. Who they co who the closest resemblance of them on this planet? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. If, you, if you just forget. <laughs> no, right. no, let's go back one. Right here. First Corinthians 16, 19, 20. Right? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of what? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Who is in you. All right? And therefore it says, what? God is in your body. All right? And now, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says what? Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? So, you really believe that a man from 2,000 years ago, a white man, is going to come out the clouds in order to save you? Mm, your grandma do. When your grandma do now. Grandma did. She lived 101 believing that. Grandma did. Yeah, she did. However, mm -hmm. the Bible told you what? Where Jesus Christ actually is. <laughs> you. Yeah. Mm. Now, I mean, the only way, uh, if you as a man, could this actually be, is if he was a homo. <laughs> If that's if you're a man and you wait for a man to come out the sky and get in you, to get in you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Educate, brother. You know what I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I know Keith Murray said I get in you. Wait, I'm sure that was not the premise. That was not the premise. All right. Educate. Wait, I, get I get in you. I'm sure Keith Murray had another understanding of that of their phrase. Just like the Bible had another understanding of the phrase, right? Yeah. So let's continue on. So now you see the Holy Trinity, which is the God, right? Who's the Father, the Holy Spirit, which is the Mother. And the Son, which is Jesus Christ, all three is in you. Mm -hmm. So stop waiting for something to come out the sky, whether it's a damn white man or a UFO or whatever the hell else they're going to come up with next coming outside of you. Because anytime that you think about something outside of you, you're putting forth your energy towards that. That means that the energy that you can be using to resurrect the God in you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is now jealous because you done wasted all that damn energy on this fool out here somewhere. And you don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't know what they're going to do. And there's plenty of examples. Let's look at Jonestown, or what mm -hmm. is known as uh, Jim Jones, Guyana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,000 blacks yeah. committed suicide and drunk the damn Kool-Aid. You see, you don't know what the hell they're going to do. Because, see, they so believed that he was the son of God. Oh, little white man Jim Jones. Curly black hair. All right? He was the he, CAA agent. That's what he was. And they wanted to see how well that spell still lasted on your Negroes. And that spell worked real well. 1,000 dead. They drunk the Kool-Aid. So, that is the case. Now you have to understand what your job is. Being that all three now resides within you. You're no longer looking for the Trinity or praying to something outside of yourself. Because I just showed you the verse where it says, glorify God in your body. Because that's the only place where the one God dwells. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Africa Deborah! <Africa -tabra. laughs> you are the missing link! You are it! <laughs> Ain't nothing left! <laughs> that's the only thing that's real! Ta da! Everything else is an illusion! And that's how they was able to manipulate the illusion because they are the magi. Yeah. They, they, they pride themselves on learning the Talmud. The Talmud is also the Mishnah, which is also part of the Kabbalah, which is magic. That's right. So they are magis and they attempt to manipulate this Maya, this matrix, and they put you in a position where you are the damn gods. You're the one that has the easy access to everything that's in here that I just showed you. So here we have the sun, the solar flares, being solar 24 right now with the solar activity or coronal mass ejections known as what? Solar flares. 
super flares and mega flares bombarding the planet Earth. This is what is going on now with the weather changes and things like that. This was also their attempt to stop these rays from coming in through the harp system and through the chemtrails. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, look up Al Gore, and he was getting interviewed recently, and he said, yes, they're putting stuff up in the sky to block out the sun. Mm -hmm. He comes out and just say it. He ain't even, they ain't not even hiding it no more. Nothing. Okay? Right. And that's the reason why. That's, that's the reason. motive. Hold up, hold up. The sun, <laughs> hold up. I just showed you what the sun does to you. Right. That's what it is. Mean. It charges. Burn that skin it, up. Well, it charges you. Right. But what does it do? Now, if it charges you, what does it do to them? It curves them. It discharges. Discharges them. Uh oh, once, hold on, hold on. Once again. The sun charges you, and what happens when you didn't be on, on charge? The pressure, same. Right. You energize. Right. Oh, what you been? Yeah. Right, right. You, you get energized. Charge is also if you um um if you want to buy something. Remember, it says you was bought at a price. A charge. <laughs> you see that in the Bible where it says you was bought at a price. So if I take money out okay. my pocket, right? What you telling me that I need to do in exchange for this? You have to give me something in exchange for this, right? Yeah. Right. What you got to do? Whatever I want. I got to accept it. Right. And in that process, what are you doing to the individual? You discharging it. You by the acceptance of it, you discharging it. But you're doing what? For me. You're charging me. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm charging you, yeah. Right. Because remember, this is currency. Yeah. This is energy. And this energy is predicated upon your belief system. Because that's right now is a debt note. <laughs> that's all this is. Look on the dollar bill. So what that means is, is that in the same way, the sun is charging us because the sun right now in this solar flag activity is going into the north and south pole of the planet Earth. All right? And you are made in the image of the Earth physically because the Earth has 75% water or three-fourths water. Your physical body is what? Three-fourths or 75% water. So you are made in the image and after the likeness of the planet Earth physically. All right? Now, that means as the energies come in, the north and south pole, it produces what's called the aurora borealis, which are the northern and southern lights. That means the Earth is encapsulating energy. These, there's 300,000 tons of stardust energy that is coming down because the sun is a star. All right? Now, continue on. All right. These are the northern lights. This is the colors of the rainbow. Same colors as within your physical structure. Roy G. Big. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Any questions? All right. Same colors. All right. Same colors. <laughs> All right, so this right here shows, all right, as a melanated being, you absorb these rays as they come through the, out the atmosphere. This is why they are clogging up the atmosphere, mm -hmm. all right, is to stop these um, charges from coming through. Because remember, that was the price in which that was paid. The stars had to die or give off their life force so you may live. This is why it says that you, that's why it says that God is a living God, because you are taking in these energies in which that is given off from these dead and other living life sources. And you have the ability as a melanated being to take in all of these frequencies as I showed you earlier. Continue on right quick. I'm going to have to do at least two minutes worth for you can see, get the premise of what I'm talking about here. This is north and south pole of your physical body. All right, you have the perineum, which is between the legs of the male. Um, of the male. Um, within the woman is the G-spot area, about an inch and a half to three inches inside the vaginal um, canal and also at the top of the head. 